Hey you guys, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to my tribe. Let me get situated here because we are definitely not. All right, hold on y'all. I hope that's a little bit better. Okay, what's going on y'all? Welcome to the channel. I wanted to do a quick video. I wanted to go live. I don't know how many people going to pop in, but this video really is just to discuss whether or not surgical techs are making enough money in 2021, considering, <laughs> hey, Jay Davis, I was coming. I was coming. Um, are surgical techs making enough money in 2021? And this video was prompted by yet another post that I saw in a group that I'm in. And I wanted to discuss what seems to be happening. I don't know. I can't speak on it firsthand because I'm not in the OR right now. But what it seems to be happening is there's a staff. <laughs> That's a staff shortage, right? Jay Davis, since you in here first, you should hit the like button, right? <laughs> um, it seemed to be a staff uh, problem. Like, it's not enough staffing. People are not going back to work. People are not wanting to work. And what does that look like if you are in the OR? So what I see right now, you guys, is a lot of people just decide not to go back to the OR. So if you are scrubbing or if you are taking contracts or anything like that, what you should be prepared for is to be worked. I almost want to say overwork because I've been to places plenty of times where they were completely understaffed. And what that does to the people that are there, it makes your job a lot harder. You, They put more responsibility on you. And in this group that I'm in, y'all, I was reading some of the comments. And one of the comments, it, it just made me so sad because I know exactly what's going on as far as how this person is feeling. I'm completely like on board with it. That's why I want to travel. You're going to have to. At this point, and even then, though, Jay Davis, the, the problem that I don't want the travelers to run into is going somewhere and getting a dog shit ran out of you. And excuse my language, but that's what that's what seemed to be gonna be the thing because these hospitals and these medical facilities aren't up in their pay, and people just like, okay, well, if you're not gonna pay me, I'm just not finna work. Like that's where they at with it. And so I was reading a comment in this group that I'm in and one of the comments said pretty much let me see if I can find it okay yeah it's one of the first ones she say um it's extremely frustrating and I'm getting shit on because I can only stay until 8 p.m because my daughter is at the hospital's daycare and they're only open until 8 p.m she's a single mother and like she said like I got here at 7 a.m being able to only stay until eight shouldn't be a huge deal, but apparently it is. I was asked this morning, why didn't I have any friends that could pick up my daughter? I asked her, she wanted to be my friend and pick my daughter up for me. I'm not going to lie, I've been looking at cybersecurity. Yeah, I mean, at this point, look, I'm gonna just be honest. So reading that comment, I could totally understand where she's coming from. And let me tell you something. Yes, where from you, Jay Davis, you already know I'm all for that. Like. <laughs> do both if you really like if you really want to you can do both but i definitely wouldn't be doing full-time staff at this point now if you decide later like i would do prn i would offer on prn or i would do medley i would do medley or care rev somebody like that where you could just pick shifts up but full-time staff is just out of the picture and so they increase the pay people don't want to be He's in my labor and delivery all day. <laughs> but even this, one of the people on here in labor and delivery saying the same exact thing. Like, they just, they just dogging people out at this point. Like, they just get everything they can and more out of you. So, the girl who I'm reading her comment, her, um, well, her, yeah, her comment to the post, she a single mom and she there from, that's 13 hours. So, she said she was there from 7 a.m., and she can only stay to seven p or to eight p.m. And the only reason she can stay that late is because her daughter is at the hospital daycare, which I think you know, kudos to the hospital for having a daycare facility inside of the building. Cause I ain't never worked nowhere that they had a um 
a daycare facility inside the building. So I think that's dope. But the um to even have your baby somewhere for that long, like who wants to have that kid? And then you talking about she said her whoever supervisor or somebody was like, why you don't have no friends to go pick your daughter up? Like I probably would have started cussing, but don't do that. You know, if you want to keep your job in that hospital at that. Right. Don't be cuss. Don't cuss nobody out. But if somebody would have came to me and talk, talking about get somebody to watch my baby. I, I done been here 12, 13 hours. And my baby done been in daycare that long. Like, honey, you liable not for me to not come back to this, to this job. But, you know, y'all don't do what I do unless you got other stuff set up to where you can move like that. But I'm just, I'm th looking at it from my perspective. I ain't finna be working for certain things, y'all. And so, and I'm gonna tell you, do not settle for that because if you go take a job that's lower than, you know, what you feel you worth, then that's just gonna bring the pay down. So I'm not mad at surgical techs for not going back to work. I think they like stay home until or go do something from home, especially if you got kids and these people not trying to come up on the pay and they want you to stay and do all this work. What if you're a student? I'm going to say finish doing the course. Don't get, don't quit doing the course because then even if you decide that you just want to teach, you know, then do that. And I don't think, I used to feel like, you know, teaching, it was kind of like that saying where those that don't do teach. And I kind of looked at it like, oh, you can't scrub, so go teach. But I say if you going to finish surgical tech school and get certified and all of that, then if you don't want to scrub, then go teach other people how to do it. But I think to be a teacher, you got to um, have a little experience. So I'm not going to say don't go to the OR because it might correct itself over time. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you to just quit. Don't do that. Just finish it out and yet let surgical tech be your side hustle. <laughs> Excuse me. Let it be your side hustle. Go ahead and do... um cybersecurity like what you were saying or something else if it, do whatever else you want if you're not if you're a person on here and you're not into cybersecurity but do something that you can do from home especially sorry guys sorry i got all kind of comments coming in um or notifications coming in but look do something from home i'm gonna tell you to have you at home business so you can use that as a tax write-off and a tax deduction you can t i write my cell phone off i write some of my electricity off i write some of my rent off I write a lot of stuff off and supplies and stuff like printer, ink, all that stuff. I write that stuff out because I have an at-home business. So I'm going to tell you to do something from home, but take surgical tech and turn it into a hustle until they can come up on the price. If they're not coming up on the pay, then, you know, okay, maybe you say I'm going to dedicate one or two days out of the week to surgical tech and then the rest of it, you focus on your business and let surgical tech fund the other stuff that you got going on but because they aren't really up in the pay and it's like the people who are at work are getting dogged out i'm just gonna tell y'all to just go traveling sign up for medley sign up for care ref and pick up shifts they need to put it up there with nursing they're gonna have to because the techs and the nurses is there to together the nurse need the tech the tech need the nurse so they need to put them together it don't make sense to have okay and you got techs with degrees associate degrees and bachelor's degrees so it's not it, it should be considered you know to the pay should be comparable 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 the same as uh nursing because y'all, they work together. It's a team, you know, unless they finna just make nurses scrub and then what you gonna do with the surgical test. So I definitely think they should put it up there with nursing, but just to see and read these comments, like it's so sad because I know where people coming from and I'm just like, I done been somewhere where you got people calling and then it ain't nobody there to, you know, pick up that extra room and then, or you don't have no turnover help or something like that. Like I totally agree with people not going to the OR, I totally understand the frustration that people are having with this pay. Uh, let me read another one of these comments. But that one, when I just read, I was like, oh my God, she been at work for eight, from eight, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And they couldn't, like, they talking about go get a friend 
to pick up your baby. You better not go get no friend to pick up your baby. You better go walk out that door and go pick your baby up. This is why I be like, people need to have more than one thing going on. Because had somebody told her that, and let's just say she did have somebody to go pick her baby up and she didn't have no other source of income, she probably would have had to get somebody else to go pick her baby up, you know, or worry about not keeping her job or something like that or being, um, like she said, it's an issue that she can't stay later. Like, that's that's a fucking problem. Like, period. She should be able to work her 12-hour shift and go home to her baby without the management making her feel like her job or like she's not appreciated for doing her job. Like, I do not agree with that at all. And matter of fact, somebody like me would have been like, I don't got 12 hours for y'all. I got four, probably maybe three. No, I'm just saying. But for her to have worked all day, that's crazy. It's crazy. My classmate is excited because they gave her a job offer after she graduated, not knowing they finna die. I'm trying to tell you, she finna get... I'm not going to sit here and tell nobody not to be happy about no job, but I'm finna tell you, they're going to get what they... If they offer you a job, they're going to get their money's worth. And right now, it's just not enough staff. It's just not enough people... Yeah, if you can go to Burger King, McDonald's, Walmart, and all these regular places, and they understaff, you got to understand that the OR understaffed too. And then I got some text messages. They offering thousands. They offering like three thousand dollars in Florida. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Florida ain't. And y'all done watched some of my videos before. Florida don't pay that kind of money. Why are they offering this type of money? For one, the contracts are saying forty eight hours now, so they're trying to be slick because they're gonna get an extra eight hours out of you. But even so, they're going to get eight hours out of you. And ain't, they need five or six people. How do you need five techs? How do you need five surgical techs? Tell me how do you need five surgical techs for this? You got a contract. And if y'all know anything about contracts, if you were recruiters or anything like that, they're going to show you. Sorry, y'all. Rocket, open the door. Um, They're going to show you. No ortho. Yeah, nah, she gonna get it. She finna be on that and that lead, honey. She finna get it. But it's okay. You know, I'm not here to tell people not to work. And I feel like if you have like the OR, I like being in the OR. I like being the surgical tech. I loved it at one point. I ain't gonna even lie. And I still love the concept of it. But to understand that if you're gonna go into the operating room and you're gonna be working. For eight hours, you're going to be on your feet. That's just an eight-hour shift. This young lady's talking about she did 12 hours, and they still wanted more out of you. The problem with working anything over 12 hours, y'all, is that you just not even really there anymore. Try working a 12 if you have not worked a 12-hour shift. Work a 12-hour shift. And tell me if at the end of that 12-hour shift, your brain ain't mush. You're not even thinking right anymore. You can't even, like, your brain, like, you're not functioning at your highest level of capacity at that point so for them to even want her to work even longer is crazy but they are short staff and these hospitals sleep yeah you can't even like how you functioning like what kind of quality of care are you really providing let me tell you something you end up working that long as you won't fuck around to get stuck somebody else gonna fuck around to get stuck don't don't do that to your stuff don't put yourself in these positions i'm telling y'all to work prn if you can if you can work part-time work part-time Take a call, take, um, not call, but work, care rev, work melody, work where you can pick up shifts. Don't do that full-time staff. It's going to burn you out. And right now, this is what's going to mess people up. If you go into the OR right now and you work how the OR is set up where they're understaffed, by the time you hit three years, you're going to be over it because you're going to be going to burn yourself out the first year or two. You're not going to have that, you know, where it's like, set, I done been to a OR doc where I done sat around half of the day because it was so many texts that we had like two texts to a room plus have texts like to come relieve each text that was in the room. It was like overstaffing and that allowed you to work at your highest um, capability. You know what I'm saying? You wasn't burnt out. You wasn't overly exhausted. But when you start working, like if you got a three to six room, um or and you're running all these rooms and the only you only got two texts and maybe a hand maybe three at the most like what you think how you this is gonna burn people out this is gonna burn somebody out so in order for you to not get burned out 
I'm going to say do Melody and do Care Rare because they're going to let you pick up shifts if you can. But you got to have one year experience with them. So now the thing is, how do you get the year experience? You're going to probably have to go to one of the, I would say do a surgery center because a surgery center are not going to be able to run all day. I don't want y'all to get burnt out. And then the pay not compensating for the amount of work. So they're going to work you. But you're about to be put to work. And it's, I mean, it's it's not okay, but that's what it is at this point. Ain't nobody working. Everybody's still at home for some reason. Or other pe people are finding other ways to make the money. Because like me, you just read my mind. <laughs> other people are going to um, find a way to make money that don't require them to go to the hospital and deal with, you know, the the doctor attitude sometimes or the or the management not being understanding to the fact that the staff is being burnt out you know so that what's gonna what will happen if people don't return to work the hospitals will come up on their pay they're gonna have to it's already happening now but it's happening more in the travel sector more in the contract sector because i'm seeing it i see it and i'm like oh girl they talking some numbers right now but then i'm i'm thinking about why are they offering this kind of money what is it exactly that you're requiring people to do? So you mess around and take a contract and be turning over rooms, scrubbing cases, giving lunch breaks, doing all of this stuff. And like they saying, I hear you talking about 12, 12, 13 hours. And these people don't care about you having no kids. So never mind your baby. Can you get somebody to watch your kids? Don't get nobody. Do not do that. Your kids matter more to you. Your kids are way more important to you than that job. If you got to take a job, a work from home job, or another job to pay your bills, do that. But don't sacrifice your quality time with your family just to appease your management team that's at these medical facilities. Don't do that because they're not worthy. I'm telling you right now, it's too many hospitals out here and you only have a, like one or two, three kids. Have, your kid is your kid. These don't We don't show loyalty to these hospitals like that. We don't. I got nine months internship. What can I do with that? What you mean you got a nine month internship? So you got to so you go to school and then you have to do nine months at a facility. Is it free? Like, do you get paid for the internship? Do you get paid for it or no? Cause oh yeah no. See the problem is you still a student, so now you can't even like you got have to finish the course. You're going to have to finish the course. But see, you're a student, so you should only be doing... I'm going to say, well, shoot, you're going to have to probably do what they tell you to do at the hospitals. But you shouldn't be scrubbing by yourself. You shouldn't be scrubbing by yourself. You shouldn't be doing that by yourself. They should have a surgical tape in there with you. They could probably scrub in. They're probably going to scrub in with you and make sure that you're doing everything right. But while you're a student, it's almost like there is nothing that you can do besides go through the course. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be like the Debbie Downer, but if we keep it at, you know, 100, like... If you give up and you've been to spend all this money on the school and stuff, then that's just a waste of money. So I'm going to I'm gonna tell you to finish the school and then maybe try to find you. The problem with coming out of school is that you don't have no experience. So when you don't have no experience, you got to get the experience. And right now, man, like, the, I just, I just, I don't know what to tell you, Jay Davis, because right now, like, it's understaffed. It's just under it's we're they're completely understaffed and there's not enough pay to really bring people back in. But what I see happening is them coming up on the pay. I see the pay being raised because you can't run a hospital with you can't run an operating room with a handful of people, you know, with a handful of surgical tests, unless they start bringing in more nurses, which is still more money. So the pay is just not. You think so? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The pay is just not there. I think I think you should finish the course. I'm just going to be honest with you. I think you should finish the course. And I say that because if you finish it, then by the time next year come along, hopefully everything be done kind of got back balanced. If, if it's not balanced um, as far as having more staff, it'll be balanced as far as them raising a pay but you're gonna need a year worth of hospital experience to take a contract you're gonna need a year to be with melody and you're gonna need a year to be with care rev so you need at least one year before you can start doing things now you can take a year and be prn 
But the, so you can say, I want to be PRN, but they might make you do 90 days. They might make you do 90 days um, full time just so you can get familiar with the cases and the docs and things like that. And then you might be able to go PRN. But I, was, I wouldn't offer full time um, to any hospital at this point. I would do PRN or part time. I would shoot for PRN. And that's just, they're not paying enough, y'all. Like, and they're not paying enough and they over they overwork you. They overworking. It's too much going on. I can see it. When I saw them offering like 3,000, I done been seeing crazy numbers and I'm just like, what in the world is really going on? Then I see, you see them offering that and then passing, when y'all see the traveling contracts out here, the traveling post, when y'all see that, look and see how many staff, how many texts they are asking for. How many texts do they need? When you start seeing three and four, five texts is needed, it's a problem. It's a problem. And when you go to that facility, you're going to make that money, but you're going to be dog tired. So if you're okay with being tired, what's the name of traveling agencies? I like Maxim. Um, fast, fast staff offers the most pay from what I can see. But right now, and I need to probably do another video on how to read a contract because some of the people that they like popping up agencies left and right because there's money out here. Like it's all type of people text me and hit me up. It's crazy because it's almost like somebody's selling our information because some of these people who um, communicate with me, I have no idea of who they are and how they got my information. But I, oh, I will, Jay Davis, because I was talking about it in another video not too long ago. I was reading uh, a contract from this group that I'm in and how the contract... Oh, hey, kid, how you doing? <laughs> um, reading how the contract was constructed and it was really going to put somebody in a bad situation. So when you're looking at contracts, you got to look at the hourly pay, which is what you're going to be um, taxed on. And then your meal and housing stipend, which is non-tax. Some companies are dropping their hourly rate really, really dangerously low. And if you drop it low and you get audited on the IRS, you're the one on the hook for it, not the company. You're on the hook for it because you that's what you're reporting your income is. So most of us, when we get our W, what it W nines, whatever, at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, when you go to file your taxes, all you do is just give it, give it to them. But it's gonna be your responsibility to um to let them know that you can't work for 10 and 15 dollars an hour as a surgical tech. Ain't nobody really working for that. And so, yeah, I'll make, I'll make another video on how to really read a contract. But yeah, what's up, Jay Davis? I got, I'm here. What's up, Shamika? Uh, it says, since they put, yes, Jay Davis, definitely sales rep. Definitely sales rep is the way to go. But you still, I'm going to get to that. Since they put responsibilities on you, this is that include a bonus now let me tell you about these sign-on bonuses let's talk about that for a minute because the sign-on bonus typically so they ain't putting this when they advertise these sign-on bonuses they're gonna want you to commit to them i've seen one to two years for a commitment of ten thousand dollars one to two years so you can commit to that if you want to for them ten thousand but if you need ten thousand dollars honey i can show you a different way to make it because that ain't gonna be not committing not committing to something for two years not committing okay jay davis i will thank you please hit the like button and then definitely consider sales rep that's a really good way to use your um your skill set if you don't want to scrub but working as a surgical i mean working i'm gonna just say this for y'all who watching if he already gone if you work as a sales rep, you still have to create relationships with the physicians and the hospitals. But you won't be getting work like, you know, if you just, and you're getting compensated. They get paid pretty good money. So a sales rep for any other medical um, instrument or medical equipment companies would be a really good uh, way to leverage your, um, your skills. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm not going to be on here long because I'm going to cut the grass today and I'm going to cut it before it rain again because it keep raining and it keep the rain keep bringing on, <laughs> bringing, bringing more grass. But yeah. So what? Hold on. Let me go back to Shamika. So, okay. Yeah. With the responsibilities, they're not giving you any more money. They're adding on the responsibilities to you and you still, it's kind of, it's kind of putting you in this position where it's like, you know, 
do I quit or do I keep coming and taking this? And I'm just, me just personally, I'm just going to tell y'all to work. If you can't go traveling, go PRN, go part-time so you don't burn out. It's not because I don't want you to be in the operating room. I want you to be in there. I enjoy being in the operating room. I learned a lot of skills. I learned a lot of things about myself in the operating room. And it's a good place to like network and communicate with people that have, you know, a higher education. Like you, you hanging around surgeons all day. Like they're servant surgeons. They literally like are some of the smartest people. You know, I ain't gonna say the smartest people on earth, but they're definitely smart. So let's not take away from them and what they bring to the table. So I would definitely say keep. That's what I'm hoping to do. I only work as a surgeon, said part time PR, and that's it. Don't burn yourself out. That full-time that full time shit is going to burn you out. I'm telling you right now, the way that it's set up right now, because with COVID happening last year, people really still haven't got back into the groove of going to work. And now that people have been without a job for so long, they figured out other ways to make money, right? So now you got the people that stayed in the OR and they just get in the dog poop, ran out of them and ain't nobody up in the pay. So if you have over a year experience, go traveling, go sign up for Melody, go sign up for Care Rev, pick up shifts, do not do full-time staff. They don't offer you enough for it. They wasn't offering enough for it before. That's why I went traveling. Y'all see what I did. I, just, I was like, peace. Y'all don't pay me enough money to deal with this. I'm going to go to another facility, make some friends, go to the next facility, make some more friends, networking, having a good time, making the most money that I can make. Okay, I'm going to check it. I'm on my phone right now. I'm going to check it in a second when I get done. When I get off here. After I walk, after I cut the grass. Because <laughs> I got I got a checklist, y'all. Look, I'll be on the checklist. I have a checklist. I'm I'm almost done. I'm going to make a video about my checklist. But we're going to get into that in another video. But definitely, um, Jay Davis, I got you. And so, um, dang, I got sidetracked. What I was saying. Oh, yeah, the PR ran part. Do that. Don't let these people burn y'all out. It's not worth it. And the fact that if they're going to let you work past like 12 hours, y'all, I'm going to say for me personally, anything past eight, I'm, I'm almost like no good to you. Let me do my eight to nine hours, go get some rest, come back the next day fresh, ready to go. If you work too much, if they put too much pressure and too much if you're working too much, y'all, is accidents happen like that. That's when the mistakes happen. I'm here to tell you. And what you don't want is a mistake to happen and you end up getting stuck with a dirty needle or some dirty instrument for some reason. Like something happens. If something happens because you're tired, like don't let you don't let that be something that happens to you. And the pay so if you end up getting hurt or something, then you got to take work miscomp or short-term disability, or something like that. And let me tell you, if y'all have seen anything before um, in the OR when it comes down to somebody getting hurt, workman's comp takes some time. All of that stuff takes some time. How much should the pay be? So the pay is going to be different in different states and different, actually, in different locations. I can't even say in different states because North Florida and South Florida is paying different rates. Right now, I see in Florida about $3,000 a week contracting. Now, I'm going to say a good number that I would be okay with in Florida. If you down here in Florida starting off with, I would say around $25 an hour. But they don't really start you off down here. Like when I was scrubbing, maybe like as a full-time staffer, or not even full-time, but I was working full-time hours at a particular facility, I met a couple of new techs, and they was only making like $19 an hour starting out fresh out of school so that was like three years ago maybe yeah three almost four years ago so i would say coming in florida maybe 25 but you got to think different places offer different rates so the first year i'm gonna tell you probably not to worry about i can't tell is it raining y'all it's raining oh my god i guess i won't be cutting the grass today or i'm gonna have to wait for it to start raining again I want to tell y'all, twenty five dollars is a good number. But if you're somewhere, if you're living somewhere like New York or LA or somewhere like that, it's not gonna be enough. I mean, that's not enough. So if we're saying twenty five dollars an hour, hold on, I'm gonna do some math. Where my calculator at? So if we do twenty five dollars an hour, right, at forty hours, come on, calculator. 
25 times 40. That's $1,000 a week, right? Times 52. That's $52,000 a year. That's really, I mean, that's that's not a lot living in. I mean, that's okay money if you in like Florida or somewhere like that. But in New York and in Cali, like that ain't going to do it. Like, you can you can make it work, but that you ain't real comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So, no, not yet. No, not yet. What, Jay Davis? I thought you was gone. <laughs> I thought you was gone, but twenty five dollars, um, yeah, that's probably like Florida, Mississippi. How does the housing stop it work as a travel? No, it's not enough. It's not enough. Does the company help you find housing? Okay, so the housing stipend is what they pay you. Now, this is something that I seen too on one of the contracts. Like they was trying to offer the housing stipend only for the shifts you work. That's not how that go, from what I can understand. When I took contracts, I was working Monday through Friday. And so I would get the housing stipend. I would just get a housing stipend. They didn't say, oh, if you work three hours or three shifts, we're going to pay you housing for three shifts. So a contract that I seen recently said that. And I just thought that was crap. Because if you go somewhere, if you leave, like go them 50 miles, like they want you to be 50 miles from your permanent resident and you're staying there. You, like like how I went to California, if they only and I only work, let's say I work three days, I would have been paying out of pocket those other four days that I'm in California. Because if I'm there, I'm not flying back home, you know, for the other four days and then flying back. Like that just don't make no sense. So when you look at a contract, you got your hourly rate, right? And then you have your meal and incident stipend as well as a housing stipend. Your hourly rate is what you're going to be taxed on. I would say when you're looking at hourly rate, somewhere around $20 would be like okay for you to accept that. And I'm saying it's okay because if you get, if the IRS, because the IRS and these other companies, they know what the average surgical tech is making. If you go let somebody put, you make $10 an hour and give you a higher housing stipend. The problem what's gonna happen is it's gonna shoot a red flag up like oh surgical tests so I make ten dollars an hour like that's not true. So your hourly rate should be somewhere in the vicinity of twenty dollars an hour or more. Then your housing stipend is gonna be based on your location, right? So I had a housing stipend of it was like a thousand dollars and something a week or something like that. It came out to be like a thousand dollars a week. That is tax free. That's all you, boo. Now, when it come down to filing the housing, one of the best things you can do... Oh, sorry, y'all. I got notifications going off like crazy. When you're looking for a house or you're looking for somewhere to stay in the area, I would say probably find somewhere to go where you got fam family or friends at, somewhere where you know somebody at at first before you venture out. But one of the contracts i was in california i didn't even know where i was gonna stay at until i got there the, what i knew that i could afford based off of my contract was i knew i could afford an airbnb um so what you can do is find an airbnb in the area and then stay in that airbnb for like a month or so if you need to and then try to find somebody either in the hospital that you could room with or somebody maybe locally that's renting a room out or something like that I probably went and go straight for a hotel because the hotels at the time were kind of expensive. The agencies, they do have, some of them have like a little discount, but the discount ain't finna be enough for it to make a big difference. It's probably gonna hit the taxes and that's it. So what I would do at this point is find an Airbnb. You can find a room on Airbnb. That's the easy way to find a room. Do it like that. And then if you feel like the Airbnb costs too much, then why you working for that month or so start networking with people that's um at the hospital you know that you know ask anybody just ask people like do you know anybody that i can rent a room from and that's really how i end up finding the room that i was renting when i was at the last uh contract i was in at california i went to the hospital 
I was actually talk the day I got there, I was talking to the director. She was real cool. And she knew of a travel nurse that had been looking around and she connected me to the travel nurse. And the travel nurse actually had already vetted the person and everything. So she was like, yeah, go here. Um, the only reason I'm not going here is because this lady over here, she had another lady that she ended up going with. And that lady um was like not always there like she was gonna be in and out and so yeah i was in i was in Mart um martinez i was gonna say my i was gonna say something else but i was in martinez california which is about 30 minutes um what is that east of san francisco so i was pretty much in the bay it was still part of the bay areas but they called it i think they called it where i was at like the east bay area something like that so it was real cool though and I was like five minutes away from the um hospital. So it wasn't like I had to deal with traffic, which I really appreciated because when you're in California hunting traffic, it's just like they need to come up with another name for that. It's not that's not normal people's traffic. So I would, but as far as housing, I would do a, um I would start with an Airbnb room. Now, if you if you go somewhere and you find out the the um your pay is a lot more and you can afford to rent the whole um, place out and do that. But I would get a room, I would just get a room on Airbnb and then I would start seeing what other people in that area said, like if, if you met somebody. And I would try to get something close to the hospital. I would get something close to the facility so you don't have to worry about being lost. And you know, when you're in a new area, you don't wanna have to like try to figure out, did you get off on the wrong exit and stuff like that. like. I was happy to be five minutes away, um, maybe 10. I could have rode a bike if I really wanted to, but I wasn't going to do all of that. Um, but yeah, I just still think though, like, unless you're going traveling, you should be working PR in a part-time right now and then have other things going on outside of the OR. And I don't care what it is, y'all. I'm always tell y'all this. You will see, if you follow me on any, uh, if you follow me on Instagram right now, you will see that I'm, really um posting a lot more about my insurance business that i'm like i'm doing that but i would still take a contract if i didn't have like let's just say i only had one other thing going on i would still take a contract but i got so much stuff going on and i this is how my i created this type of lifestyle so i'm not complaining but going somewhere that's just not fit into my lifestyle anymore but i would take a contract like i would do a shift like I would do a shift. There's no shifts like here in Jacksonville that um, I seen. I did see some in Gainesville that if it was a little bit more, I probably would do it, but eh, it's not enough for me to want to make that kind of trip. Like, and, and Gainesville is only an hour away from me. So if you're in Florida, like get, get care. Even if you're not in Florida, get care rev. It's an app. Um, I always talk about Care Rev. Y'all will keep hearing me talk about it. I'll put the link in the description. Use my reference code if you don't mind. Just to, um, you know, show me a little bit of love back. It don't cost you nothing. And pick up a shift with them. You should be able to. That's what I'm That's what I'm trying. Because the thing with when you fresh out of school, what they, they might try to get you to do full time. And you know what? This mama just tell you, like, between me and you and the rest of YouTube. Let's just say you did take the full-time job for six months. Take it for six months. Take it just to get the training. Because you're going to need it at the beginning. At the beginning, you're going to need it. I ain't going to even lie. I don't want to be like, y'all don't need the training. At the beginning, you're going to need it because you got to get used to some of the doctors. So, with some facilities, what I know is they'll let you do PRN and shit. The, the way it's set up right now, they're probably going to take anything you're willing to give them. But if you do PRN, they might make you do like three months, oh, excuse me, three months full time just so you can get familiar with everybody and then you can go PRN. You can say, you can try that. You can try that. Or you could just say, I'll do part time. You can try that. But don't. Your goal is to not get burnt out and to and to get the experience that you need. And then you can go traveling because that's where the money going to be at if you feel like, well, I ain't going to tell you if you feel, they're not going to be paying you enough for you to want to work full time staff at one particular place. The, unless you get an the experience, there's no real reason for you to be full time at nobody facility. And I ain't trying to be funny if it's like 
you know, some medical professionals that like management team, they be like, oh, you should, there is no real reason, unless they are giving you some type of training that you just need, you should get that training, get your experience and go get your money, go get your bag from somewhere else, go sign up with every, every single agency that you can find, do the top dogs first, like Maxim is one of the top ones, Fast Staff is one of the top ones, um, is it Errors? I think I'm saying that right. It's a couple of them that that you can find that that are you're gonna see a lot of. I like Madison. Um, my recruiter, she don't recruit no more. Somebody else taking her position, so I was just like, that's the past. How much are they offering for um for where Jamika? I almost called you Jamika. That's my sister name. <laughs> How much they paying where Jamika? I'm not trying to get on YouTube with y'all. How much how much they paying where on um on medley or like what what you referring to? I'm finna put um I'm gonna put hey, I gotta sign all the way in. Hold on, y'all. I got my son laptop. I normally have mine. Hold on, let me get get my life together over here. Oh God, what is it? Hold on, y'all. Look at this. Okay. I'm trying to get on YouTube with y'all, but I don't know my password. Oh, boom. Dang. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. They cut me out. <laughs> So let me see. Did I miss Shamika? I don't know what I'm um, offering. So, I'm offering. Uh oh, wait a minute. So, uh oh, wait a minute. Let me turn that off. Let me drop this in the chat. So, Carev is a travel agency. It's not a travel agency at all. Actually, what it is is a um. Carev is a place for you to pick up shifts. So if it doesn't matter where you're at, what location you're at, it's kind of like Instacart or like Uber, but for surgical for medical professionals. And your girl has a reference code, so she's gonna put that in the chat as well. Uh oh, if she could type. Uh oh, that's wrong. Hold on. Can I edit that or do I got to delete it? Let me delete it and then I'm going to put it back. I think that's gone. Okay. So, what did I put? Did it delete it? Yeah, it did. Okay, good. Carev and Medley are the same. They're not the same company, but they're the same type of company. Okay, there. So y'all can pick up shifts with them if you have uh, at least a year experience. They update very often um, here. So I get Jacksonville, Orange Park, and Gainesville. And Gainesville is like an hour away from me. And I still get their um, notifications as well. And then they put multiple, you're welcome. They put multiple agencies up there or multiple facilities, excuse me, up there. And you can just pick a shift and you're not required to sign a contract. You just required to go there, do your shift. And then, you know, that's it. And so I think this is a great way for you to actually pick up some shifts without, like, without burning yourself out because, and then two day offering at the one here in Jacksonville, well, it's it's only showing Gainesville right now, but it was showing thirty dollars an hour, which thirty dollars an hour is really actually halfway decent for Florida, like this Florida Jacksonville, Florida area. So thirty dollars an hour on care for this area. It's not the greatest pay, but when we're talking about as a hustle, what should they what should the offer be? I would me personally. Because I look at us, I think they should come up to like $35, $40 an hour. When you're taking a contract, 
Sometimes a contract will be worded like $46, $47 an hour, or $50 an hour. But that don't mean that that whole $50 is tax taxable. Like, we'll just say half of that might be taxable. So you'll be making $25 an hour taxable, and then the other $25 an hour will be non-tax. So that's why I like contracts, because you get to play with the taxes, and it's a little tax deductible, you know, in there. But if we're talking about, like, keeping up your experience, and just staying active in the OR without burning yourself out because they're not paying enough money to the surgical tax for the amount of responsibility. Tax should not be working 12 hours plus. Like when I see the girl that I was reading earlier, her comment in the Facebook group, nobody should be working those type of hours because it's dang it becomes dangerous for the, the, mem the staff members and the patient. People be tired, you know, like, it's, it's, it's not enough money for you to be working at. So if you take control over your time, then they gonna have to like figure out a way to come up with the pay. So if, in the meantime, if you got at least a year experience, you can go traveling. If you got a year experience, you can work with um, Care Rev or Medley. I haven't dealt with Medley, um, but I did have, um, I did do some things with Care, Care Rev. So I like Care Rev. Um, right now I got a, a notification on my phone. It looked like they put up two, two or three more positions. So people, they need help right now. Like y'all is, it's understaffed. I'm here to tell you, it's not a lot of people working. People are not trying to be in these jobs like that. And so if you are going to be working, because, you know, this is more, people don't went to school to be surgical techs. People got student loans, so they got to pay them loans back. You know, we built a whole lifestyle around this career. So I'm not going to tell you to go find something else to do. But I will tell you to maybe switch up how you're doing it a little bit. Like maybe not 40 hours at one facility, unless you are fresh out of school and you need a year's experience or if you haven't been in the OR for a little while, then you're going to have to go get a job for, you know, somewhere where you can build your skill set back up and then you can go off and make some money traveling or something like that. But I would not <laughs> be working full time for nobody. Like, and I'm not going to advise you to do it. And I'm definitely not going to tell you to do it right now because when I even see the traveling contracts and the traveling contracts are saying they need five and four surgical techs, that means that that facility is short staff. That means if you go, you're going to be a part of the short staff, you know, situation. So you're going to be pulling cases. You're going to be helping turning over rooms. You're going to be helping set up for the next case. You're going to be, you know, scrubbing at cases and not getting no break or something like that and that's just not it's just not okay so if you are gonna jump into that then do it a little bit at a time like don't just go full force and even if you take a contract you know that's only gonna be you're gonna only be doing that for 13 weeks or eight weeks or something like that so you might be like okay i can get through these eight weeks or i can get through these 13 weeks and then you can go take a break like I'm the type that I'm taking a month, two months off, you know, because that's that's how I like my life set up. Shoot, I might work for three months and then not work the rest of the whole year because I that's how I like my life. I don't be wanting to work for people like that. So what I'm going to tell y'all is to kind of look at surgical tech until the staffing and everything get back normal. And thank you guys for the likes. I really appreciate them. But until everything get back kind of normal with the staffing, Look at it as, I ain't going to call it a hustle, but like flip it. So do it part-time, do it PRN and have something else going on on the side. Like do something else. I don't care. Sell some stuff on eBay, crochet some things. What can you do? What do you like to do? Can you bake, bake some cakes and sell them? Like, I don't care. Do something else. Just don't focus all your time on working in these house. You should have more than one stream of income anyway. As y'all already know, if y'all been he hearing me talk, I, I feel like I be repeating myself and I don't be wanting to keep saying it, but I want to drill it into y'all head. Have more than one stream of income. Have more than one stream of income. So you don't have to be put in these positions where you got to stay to work. And if you don't stay them 13 hours, your manager looking at you sideways. If my manager looked at me sideways and I don't work, 10 hours, honey, you about, I'm about not to come back to this bitch. Like, that's how my brain be working. Like, when you acting funny and I done gave you the best that I can give you and that still wasn't good enough. So why am I finna keep coming and giving you 
all of me when what I'm giving you ain't good enough. So don't give all of your energy. Don't give all of yourself to these companies. They are not worth it. You are way more valuable to yourself if you do this and like, you know, be careful. Don't just be like working all the time. Don't be, because you're going to get burnt out. And people like, y'all ain't seen nobody. Sorry, y'all, my chicken's going crazy. Y'all ain't seen nobody having no mental breakdown in the hospital. And if you have, the shit is kind of scary and it's sad because why are you having a nervous breakdown at work? People have nervous breakdowns in the hospital. It's, it might not be common, but I done seen people have meltdowns. I done seen people like, they just don't know what to do. And the, and, the, and the management really could care less. People don't care that your kids get sick. They don't care about that. You know what they care about? Is if they don't get Dr. Smith's room started at 7 o'clock, he's going to start complaining. Dr. Smith doesn't really care about your daughter throwing up in the car and you having to turn around. They don't care about that kind of stuff. It's a business. And you have to run your career as a business. And so having more than one stream of income, having more than one way to make the money, and then leveraging it. If you want to work work as a surgical tech, work as a surgical tech, but what else can you do with that surgical tech career? You can be a teacher. You can, you can be a tutorer. You can just leverage the, leverage your knowledge so that you can have more than one stream of income. Do it, make a YouTube channel <laughs> and start talking about, you know, surgical tech. Like, I don't care. Create a stock, do something. Just don't focus all your energy on being in the operating room because if your only way of making money is going to be training your the average rate, but see, Shamika, so the average rate is hard for me to say because that's based off location. So we'll say a good rate in the South, a good rate in the South, we'll say, I'm going to say 25 to $30. Like that might be good down here because you can work with that. You know, you can work. I should, I don't work with less than that. So I know it can be done, but it still didn't get me. So when we're looking at a minimum, that minimum, once you start, if let's just say you got something that you can do outside. Let, let's just say you can create something. I don't know, journals. like, And you start selling journals for $25 or $20 a journal, right? And that journal, we just say you make it on Canvas so it don't cost you nothing. When you start doing that and you start looking at, okay, it's going to cost me $25 an hour to go to work. They're going to pay me $25. Your brain shifts. So... It's hard for me to tell you how much the average rate is. In California and San Francisco, you could be making $40 an hour. That still might not be enough for you in California. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to say average. So we'll, I'm going to say in the Bay Area, a good price will probably be $40 an hour. We're going to double it. You know, we're going to bring that down a little bit in, in the South because we, we live in a little bit... Um, you know, our cost of living out here is a little bit less. But when you're talking about LA and Cali... And, and San Francisco and those areas, them tech is gonna have to be making around thirty to fifty dollars an hour just to be, um, you know, at the the above poverty line, and and in New York and certain areas. So you can't, I can't really give you an average because that would be like an average overall. And if you read like um, salary, I think is it salary.com or Glassdoor, one of those websites, they'll say that the average surgical tech is making around twenty something dollars an hour. That's without call. And Lord forbid, if you go somewhere and you got to pick up call, we ain't even get into the call pay because call, if they short staffed, then y'all, somebody always at work. If they short staffed, it's going to always be a short staff, a short of like the shift. And then it's going to be short of the call, the call shift, like the call rotation. So you finna be working, y'all like in the pay. So for me to tell you like a staff pay, I'ma say a staff pay because as a tech, as a traveling tech, we looking at forty five to fifty dollars an hour as a staffer. I mean, as a traveler uh, in that range, you might even hit fifty five dollars. The way that it's set up right now, they throwing money at people because ain't nobody trying to go to work. So we'll say I'ma just give you like a difference. If you a staffer, we'll say the average nationwide if we need to do the whole nation it's gonna be around 25 dollars, right that's the whole nation which we know if you in like i already said if you're in new york it's gonna be more than that um and then if you in like the bay and la and san diego it's gonna be more than that because it costs more to live in those places 
than it would be like if you were in Texas or Florida or Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana. It's cheaper. It's the cost of living out here is cheaper for us. So we 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 can we can play with around twenty five thirty dollars an hour as a staffer as a as a traveler. You push yourself around that forty five to sixty dollar an hour, and half of that is not tax. So you still in the same range, but you getting a little bit more because you get the mill and the housing stipend, right? And that mill and housing stipend is not taxed. So if I'm making fifty dollars, some like fifty some dollars an hour traveling, I'm only being taxed at twenty five dollars or twenty something dollars an hour. You see what I'm saying? So the average is kind of hard for me to say. We'll just say a a, na a nation's average if we combine everybody together is gonna be around twenty five to thirty dollars an hour. That's without taking call. Once you start adding call and shift diff and all of that into the play. Then the pay go up. Those would be considered like bonuses and the um yeah bonuses I guess. And so they don't really include that into like the average when you're looking at Glassdoor and Salary.com and those those websites. But we'll say twenty five to thirty dollars as a staff person. And to me, that's still not enough money. Not for you to be standing on your feet thinking you you stand you using your body physically and you using your mind. So you have to critically think right. And you have to physically be capable to do the job. And now there's not enough people to do the job. So the people that they actually have showing up are getting like it's double work or at least a little bit more work when you are already at your capacity because you got to think. You don't just get to go in these cases and not think. You there, you standing, you interacting and you have to communicate effectively and you have to critically think. If you're in the OR and you're doing, we'll just say an easy case. We'll just say a lap appy, right? And you're doing that. And let's just say you got some residents come in or you got some students that's coming in. Now you got to pay attention to the whole damn field and what everybody doing to make sure that they don't contaminate nothing. And you got to make sure to hand the dot or be able to pay attention so you can anticipate what the dot need. Some places do offer bonuses. They do offer sign-on bonuses. And um, I, I mentioned this earlier. Excuse me, the sign on bonuses normally come with a requirement to uh, an obligation. So you might have to do a year or two at the facility. So if you get a $10,000 sign on bonus, they probably going to ask you for two years. So I've, I've inquired, I've seen them. And not so much recently, but I just know how it goes now. When I see a sign-on bonus, it's almost like the military prepared me for that. Because the military, when I, when I joined, they gave me a sign-on bonus too. But the sign-on bonus I got, it ain't come close to how, how much, you know, time and energy that they were going to get out of me. So when you see a sign-on bonus, you can guarantee you that comes with some type of obligation. Normally, I've seen ten year, or two years for $10,000. So that's with the bonuses. Um, if you do take a travel contract, some agencies will give you a completion bonus, a, a, an assignment completion bonus. And so, excuse me, that's always great, right? To get a little bit extra at the end, but you're going to really kind of need it because, you know, you got to get back home and depending on how much money, they don't really give you a whole lot for travel. So you probably going to need that like, you know, um, completion bonus just to even get back home. So. But a bonus as a staffer, yeah, it comes with some type of commitment. You're going to have to be at that facility. And I would advise y'all not to commit yourself unless it's somewhere that you want to go and just be there. Like I was watching a girl in one of the groups. She had been in Alaska for two years. Now, me personally, I don't like to be cold, so I ain't going to Alaska now. But for other people, they might find that experience amazing. And so she did it for two years and she got a, com a completion bonus at the end of it. So, you know, it just depends on what you, you know, what, what's valuable to you. Do you want to go make money? Do you want to go somewhere for the location? When it comes down to me, um, trade and my time for money is business. So I don't really care. I mean, I care about the location. If I can go somewhere where my family is and let's just say if I can get somewhere with my family and I can stay with them. Like, that'll be worth it. You know what I'm saying? Because if I can get somewhere, if it's not my favorite place, but let's just say I got family there. Then I'll go there because I get to spend time with family. I probably can stay with my family. And I'm making money at the same time. So it wouldn't be, like, all bad if you could get a, a contract that's close to people that, um, that's close to some friends and family that you know. 
But if it's not something that has to do with like you just want to experience the the location, then I'm all about like it, the, if it don't make dollars, it just don't make sense. And if you're finna be working in the operating room for hours, that you need to make the most amount of money that you can, you know. And and that's why I say go traveling. That's why I'm telling. That's why I say traveling because that's gonna be the best place for you to make the most money and make it fast. Um, without committing yourself, without being like at some one facility for eight hours for like three, four, five years. And what I can tell you is that if you stay somewhere for too long, if they don't offer you like a really decent amount of money, like I was talking to, um, a while ago, I was talking to, uh, uh, Paris creations. And he was saying at the facility that he's at after a certain amount of time, I think they give them like a $5 or something like that bonus. So I don't think I'm in a $5 pay raise. Like $5 is a pretty decent amount. So I don't know, but it's $5 is a $5 pay raise going to get you um, the amount of money that you would get if you took a contract in that area. You know what I'm saying? Like with that, is that going to, because for me, if I, if I'm working somewhere and let's just say we're in New York. So let's just say I make $30 an hour. I stay for a year. They give me $35 an hour. But what are the traveling tags making in New York? They making probably like close to like $50 an hour. Right, seriously. So, dude, I mean, it's up to you how you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? But for me, it's about money at the end of the day. And when it comes down to being in the operating room. So, all right, you guys. So, my phone is at 5%. Um, it looked like it stopped raining, so I'm gonna go ahead and go cut the grass. If y'all just coming in, please hit the like button. I appreciate each and every one of y'all for spending the time with me today. If you didn't catch the whole thing, just go back and watch the replay and, you know, show me some love. I will catch y'all on the next one. I'll be back, um, uh, sometime this week. I wanted to play a game, but I don't have time to play the game with y'all right now. I want to play a game and I have it all kind of worked out. So we're gonna play a game here in the next couple of days. Maybe we'll play it. What's today? Today, Wednesday. Maybe we'll play it on Friday. We'll see. I want to play a game with y'all and see, like, you know, get some interaction. So, I'm going to catch y'all on the next video. And let me, I'll just get, wait a few more minutes. Like, does anybody that's in here have any questions or comments or anything that they want to add or ask? I'll just wait, like, a minute or two for y'all to say or ask a question. It don't look like um it don't look like nobody got nothing to say. Let me make sure I ain't missing nothing. Okay then. So I'm gonna come back to y'all. We're gonna talk about these contracts and this money that's out here for these surgical tests, but I wanna play a game. So I'm gonna catch y'all probably another time this week and then we'll play a game. Thank you guys again. No. All right. Thank you. Thank y'all. See y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.